The Evil Dead franchise is back with a bang and the recent release in this popular horror series is a delightful crowd please. Filled with violence and gore, it sticks to the basics that made Evil Dead so iconic in the first place and the movie also offers some new settings with the evil entities unleashed in an apartment this time around. From the beginning of the franchise, the possession factor seemed to be a bit random and it never really been clearly spelt out as to how one gets infected or possessed by the deadites. In this video, we will give you our our share of the theory and also try to explain how it works in the recent release. We will be dealing with a few spoilers along the way, so you have been warned. Who are the Deadites and how do they get control over their victims? The Deadites are the primary evil entities in the franchise and they can be best described as evil demonic beings. The Deadites are usually unleashed through the verses of the Necronomicon, aka the Book of the Dead, and these sadistic beings enjoy torturing and killing their victims. It all starts after they take over their victims and have a physical body to control. This not only allows them to mislead and confuse the other humans around, but it also gives them access to the means that they require to spill blood and guts. Evil Dead Rise seems to bring back this premise and it is once again the Necronomicon that invites all the trouble. After Ellie, the mother of the kids, is possessed, there is no stopping the mayhem that unfolds and it all boils down to an ultra-violent showdown with the Deadites. How do Deadites possess their victims in general? As we have discussed before, the Deadites have no specific rule in possessing their victims. However, a pattern can be observed from the way that they have taken control of human bodies in the past. One common factor that can be noted in almost every character who has been taken over by the Deadites is some kind of injury or near-death experience. It seems like the Deadites find it easier to prey on physical or psychological weaknesses and those who are strong-willed are less likely to be possessed. This would explain how Ash, the Chosen One, is not easily taken over. Even when he is possessed briefly, he manages to snap out of it and redeems his soul. In the subsequent additions to the franchise, we have observed characters who are mentally tough and strong to have warded off the influence of the Deadites. There are a couple of others like Ash who managed to reverse the possessions even after the Deadites took over. The Necronomicon has its own set of mysterious rules regarding human possession, but it is quite evident from the events in the franchise so far that possession becomes a lot easier when the victim lacks a particular inner strength to fight back. Evil Dead movies might thrive on unpredictability of who gets taken over by the evil forces, but even the recent release, Evil Dead Rise, seems to abide by these basic rules. How does possession work in Evil Dead Rise? Evil Dead Rise follows a pattern that is all too familiar. Some dummy falls into the trap of curiosity after an earthquake reveals an underground vault beneath an apartment complex. Ellie's son, Danny, steps down and brings back the Necronomicon and a cassette that has the audio recording of specific verses from this cursed book. When he ends up playing this in his apartment, the evil forces are unleashed, and his mother, Ellie, is the first one to fall victim. The demonic beings attack her in the elevator of the apartment, and it is impossible to escape. The next time we see her, Ellie is not her human self anymore, and she is simply a walking deadite with twisted plans for her kids and her sister. In her case, the possession rule seems to hold good. Ellie has recently been abandoned by her husband and she is raising three kids as a single mother. She doesn't know where to move after the apartment will be taken over and all these factors can cause her enough emotional distress to make her weak. She becomes the first target because she is the most vulnerable among the lot that we see in the movie. And the evil entity uses her body as a vessel to unleash the gore and bloodlust that follows. The next one to get infected or possessed is Ellie's daughter, Bridget. She was previously attacked and received a cut under her eyes, but as it turns Turns out, the injury was just a way to take over her body slowly. A black liquid starts oozing out of her ears and nose, and Ellie's sister Beth soon finds a possessed Bridget chewing on glass. She is eventually impaled by Ellie's youngest daughter Cassie, and Danny ties her corpse to avoid further attacks. The plan does not work, and soon Bridget injures Danny after launching a surprise attack. He manages to light her on fire and get some temporary respite, but eventually he succumbs to his injuries and becomes possessed, just like Bridget. 
Meanwhile, Ellie's neighbors, including the powerful young man and the shotgun-wielding old fellow, are all possessed after being attacked by the Deadites. Evil Dead Rise follows the basic rule of easy possession of those who are mentally weak or physically injured. While Ellie's neighbors are gravely wounded before their bodies are taken over, the evil forces thrive on Ellie's weakened psychological state. Bridget and Danny are possessed after the Deadite form of Ellie inflicts direct injuries on their bodies, and Cassie, the youngest daughter, somehow manages to escape the possession. The the movie ends with a young lady named Jessica being possessed in the parking lot of the apartment. This is after the possessed corpses are thrown into the wood chipper and obliterated, so clearly the evil entity is still alive. Jessica comes down to the parking lot to head out for a vacation and she gets possessed, which can be seen in the opening sequence of the movie when she slaughters her friends. How did Cassie and Beth avoid being possessed? It could be because Cassie is far too young and innocent to be corrupted by evil, and it could also be because of the positive energy that the kid seems to possess. Even in the worst of situations, she did not panic and confidently supported her aunt Beth, the other primary protagonist in the movie. Beth had her own motivations to be strong, and her will to survive the nightmarish string of events was probably the strongest. It was revealed earlier in the movie that Beth is pregnant, and she felt a strong motherly attachment towards young Cassie. Cassie. Even after Ellie, Bridget and Danny were goners, Beth continued to try and save Cassie with her life. The dying wish of her sister was to ensure the safety of her kids and even this was probably playing in the back of her mind. Beth suffered from direct injuries inflicted on her by Ellie and later by the combined monstrous form of Ellie, Bridget and Danny. However, the evil forces simply could not take over her body no matter how hard they tried. She is basically the modern day equivalent of Ash and she and Cassie managed to evade the deadite influence courtesy of of their mental strength and innocence. Do inanimate objects also get taken over by the demonic force? The Evil Dead franchise has previously shown instances of inanimate objects being possessed by the evil forces. The recent release also follows in similar directions, and there are times when you get the feeling that certain inanimate objects also get possessed. For instance, the elevator in the apartment seems to have a mind of its own, and it opens and shuts and goes up or down depending on its convenience. The elevator almost trapped Cassie and Beth to their deaths before a lucky snap allowed them to break free. The apartment as a whole seems to have been shrouded by some kind of negative influence and while it may not be possession, the building was surely taken over by the evil forces in some way. The lack of a cellular network or the outside world being unable to hear the cries for help indicates that the building became an isolated area plagued by the Deadite influence. Do let us know in the comments below what you think of the Deadite possession and how it works. Don't forget to tell us about your thoughts on the new movie and if you haven't watched it yet, it is high time that you experience the infamous horror franchise back in business.